Number five is nourishing your spiritual life. Nourishing your spiritual life. You were designed to need regular outpourings of the presence of the living God into your life. Just like you were designed to need physical water every day in regular periods, you were also designed to get regular injections of the Spirit of God into your life. So in Ephesians 5, verse 18, it says, Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And I love that the imagery in in Scripture of the Spirit in this sense, in this case, is an imagery of liquid being poured into you. Now, some people look at their spiritual lives, and they look at their, their spiritual lives as a duty, as an obligation, What do you, uh, are you doing your devotions? And uh, I'm not doing my devotions, I feel bad. If I'm doing my devotions, I feel good. And there's all kinds of weird things that go on in people's minds. Just simplify it and realize you need the water of the Spirit. So go drink the water of the Spirit. It's not duty or obligation. You just need it to thrive in your life. You need that time with him. So let's, exa- let's say, for example, that you were very thirsty. Let's say you're, it's a movie night, and you've been, you've been doing, you've been watching the Bourne trilogy, the best trilogy ever made, <laughs> and you're, you're through, you're into the third movie, and you're watching Jason Bourne, you realize, you know, I've been, I've been eating Doritos for a few hours, and I haven't had a drink. I'm really thirsty. And someone reaches over to you and they say, here, have some salted peanuts. And you you maybe will take some and your mouth gets more dry and someone else says, hey, no problem, just have some of these salt and vinegar chips. This will cure you. Well, it's not at that moment like you think, I need to discipline myself to drink more water. I I need to make up a regimen of drinking liquids in my life. So I'm going to put a chart on my wall and I'm going to keep track of it. You don't do that. You just drink. You just go get a drink of water. And the same is true of the presence of God. Just enjoying and drinking of His presence every moment of every day. Setting aside times that are dedicated, longer, extended times where you drink of His presence. I think that's a better way to think of our spiritual lives and having our spiritual lives renewed. What I'm really enjoying doing in in my life these days is hopefully getting up before the rest of the family, make myself a cup of coffee and have some breakfast, and then I go to my special chair and I drink a cup of coffee and I meditate on the goodness of God. I just sit there and I enjoy a good cup of coffee, maybe the sun's rising, and I'm thinking, God is so good. God is so good. I'm reminding myself, God is good. God is good. God is for me. Have another drink. God is for me. His purposes for me will prevail. And then I open up the scripture, and I I go through uh, different, uh, maybe one or two chapters a day, and just, just drink what I can from there and, and uh, pause on the truths that God seems to be bringing to the surface in that reading. And then I do some journaling. A lot, I talked about that a lot, some thankfulness journaling. If I have time, I might also confess out loud some things that are true about me and who I am in Christ. And I might take time just to read a good Christian book that nourishes my soul and gets me motivated and fired up. I have been so replenished by taking extended times with God. And I started it not because I wanted to be spiritual. Being spiritual has nothing to do with it. I'm just really, 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 really thirsty. And I really need my bucket filled. So I'm going to stay there for a long time. It's the opposite of what you'd think. I'm, I'm not trying to be anything. I'm just trying to get a drink. And you need to take extended times and drink. Have your soul nourished by the Spirit of God. 
In Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, there's one of my favorite Old Testament stories. I'll just give it to you in a nutshell. It says that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Now Joshua's job was to be an aide to Moses. That means that he got all the menial tasks. So if Moses needed his staff brought to him, he would say, Joshua, bring my staff to me. And then he'd have to go get it. But this scripture verse tells us that when Moses went to meet God face to face, Joshua tagged along. When Moses would leave, who would linger? Yeah. He would just stay. Where's Joshua? I don't know. He's probably just lingering in the presence of God. What in the world is he doing? He's drinking so deeply. And as he drinks deeply, there's a transformation that happens in his life. He's only there because he's thirsty. But as he drinks, he starts to get transformed. His confidence is built up. And as he's in the presence of God, he can start to see himself doing things for the Lord that he couldn't see before. I can only imagine what's happening there in the presence of God. He starts to see himself as God sees him. He starts to see the glory and the power and the capability of God. And he stays there. And when he comes out a few years later after all this lingering, and it's time to appoint a new leader, it's obvious. This guy was transformed by being in the presence of God. This guy can lead us towards God-honoring purposes in our lives. And it was a byproduct of him being thirsty for the presence of God and him lingering, staying, 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 staying until he was full of the presence of God.